Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And Ron, we got episode 222 today. So, birthday boy, you remember the TV show Room 222? No. It no. would have been when you were a little kid, and it was a uh, 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 junior high or high school. It was probably like the TGIF shows of its day. I think it was on, before, you know, with the Partridge family and the okay. Brady Bunch. Okay, yeah, and no, so, that's one I don't remember. Uh, so so that's this episode, and so the cute little pixie teacher was Karen Valentine, who you probably remember as being one of the squares on Hollywood Squares. Okay, probably, yeah. The, the, the original one, not the Davidson version or the Bergeron version, but the, but the 70s version. And so I would never knew what she was famous for when we would watch that growing up in the late 70s, but room two, it's 222, so it's the Karen Valentine version, all you 60-plus people, there you go. How There's deep, how deep did you have to research to get that? I didn't, actually. Some of the stuff I do. <laughs> I, you know, the area, I looked to see if there was an area code 222, and there isn't. Uh, but so, but some of the stuff I do, but that one, no, I've known that one for a while. Nice. Fantastic. Hey, ways to get a hold of us. Digital to dice.com is the website. That's digital T O dice.com nine, seven, eight, seven, five, one dice. If you want to send us a text digital to dice at yahoo.com is our email over on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice. And if you'd like to support the show on Patreon for $2 a month or $5 a month, it's patreon.com slash digital to dice. Now this is episode 222. We are recording on actually April 19th, 2024. This is actually my birthday, but we were supposed to record yesterday and yes. I, I ended up spending the day at the doctor, then in the hospital for a while. Uh, turns out that Tuesday night when I refereed, I got home and everything was fine. And when I laid down in bed, it felt like I had gout. And if you've ever had gout, it's one of the most painfulest things you can have. Mm-hmm. It's in my your, t- it. it's in your, mine's in my toe. So it's not it, not really yeah, a life threatening thing for people that have gout. It's in a toe. Yeah, it's not really a life threatening thing. Although um, I know uh, uh, Adam from the franchise hockey manager uh, game, he had it in his knee and he needed emergency surgery. So it can, oh. it can be a serious thing depending where you get it. Mine's it's in my. Build up, it's a buildup of urea. Did you know that? Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's something like that, and uh, it just takes a while to filter out. Your, your blood actually crystals, and it just. Anything to, like you can't even put a sock on. You can't put a sheet on when you go to bed when you have gout. It is that painful. So there's no like walking around. Or, it's just you can't put a sock on. It, it hurts that bad. But it's yeah. in your toe, so it's not like you think you're going to die. But it's just some of the most. It's like a toothache. It's it's right. the most intense pain you can have. And so that's what it felt like. And two days in a row, I had it. When I walked around, I was fine. But when I lay down, it was killing me. And so it was three in the morning, and I couldn't sleep. So I get up. And I was doing some work downstairs, and I set up my next game of Apple football, and the wife's like, you all right? I was like, no. No, I'm not all right. It's 3 in the morning, and I'm downstairs walking around because I can't lay down because I can't. I'm in too much pain. And so I finally ended up falling asleep for about an hour, and then I get up at 8, and I call the doctor. and says, I, I need to come in. I go, I am just in too much pain. And so they saw me, and they... um. When he touched my foot, he pressed on like right on the kind of on the top of my foot, so to speak, right where you tie your shoe. And I went through the roof and he goes, yep. He goes, you either have a break or you have um, you've you've done some damage to your nerve here. Probably from, you know, when I told him the story about tying my skates, he goes, yeah, you probably had them too tight for too long. And it just it's all swelled up here. I can see the swelling. So we get so we uh, haven't got the x-ray back yet. So I don't think it's a break. He goes, I don't think it's a break, but we'll check. Right, because I don't think I'd be walking around if it was broken like like I I was, and so anyway, um, he gave me some prednisone, right? And then he gave me some gout medicine. He goes, well, only take it if you need it, but let's see what the X-ray says. Well, the X-ray never came back. I'm still waiting on it. Almost 24 hours later, the pain was so bad when I got home that I decided to take the prednisone. I says I, I need to do something, so I took the prednisone. You and you and my cat, by the way. Holy yeah! In like 20 minutes to a half hour, the pain was cut in half. And I was like, okay, I'm on to something here. You know, I need to, because I, I, I need to sleep and I can't sleep. So then a few hours, I think I streamed a little bit when I felt better. I was telling people on the stream I was feeling better. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw you on. It, well, like, that's oh, how, he must be feeling better. That's how fast it kicked in. And then I took the next dose. And then by, you know, by midnight, I think I was on, I was watching Al play something. Then I went on and did the end of my Cowboys Giants game. 
and I took the last six. You're supposed to take six the first day. And uh, by that time, things were feeling pretty darn good. Not gone, but ho- like 80% gone to a point where I could sleep last night. So, How's your shoulder doing with that? Holy crap. What, my, my bad shoulder, there's no pain at all. My really bad shoulder, it's probably like 30% of what it normally is. So it's helped, it's helped my shoulders See, too. What a steroid does is it doesn't help you build muscle mass. It helps you recover from working out. And that's the dangerous thing because you can work, you know, for athletes who do it and they've gotten busted, it's to help you work out more and recover quickly from those workouts. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. And so, so that's why it's there. It's not, it doesn't build you muscle mass. It recovers so it you just, can do it. Keep it going. It just helps you recover quicker so you can, so you can do that. Interesting. So. Yeah. No, cause, and I, well, so I posted on Facebook that I was, you know, in a lot of pain and, you know, and then I was, you know, getting x-rays and so, someone chimed in that when I posted that I put, I was taking the prednisone and the pain went away. Someone said that, that, that they take that for gout and it kills the pain almost immediately. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so, so we were supposed to record yesterday. Instead, I'm in and out of hospitals and in a lot of pain. Um, that hopefully has subsided. I'm glad that, you know, being my birthday here, I'm, I was able to go out to lunch with the wife, and I got to play some things. We'll get to it in a minute. So did you get yourself a, a jar or a bottle of Heinz 57? They still make it. It's ridiculously expensive, but they still make it. Heinz 57? Never heard of Heinz 57? I, I know that there's uh, ketchup. It's a, it's a spicy ketchup. Oh. And since that's your age... You, you can now use Heinz 57 all year because it's special for you. I can. I can if I can find it. Maybe I'll try. Yeah, it's hard to find, but that's uh, <clears throat> it's it's one of those kind of like you know the Karen Valentine references. We do get as obscure as we can, but yeah. no, you, next time you're at Market Basket, take a look. It's actually just a spicy ketchup. Oh, okay. I might I might check that. Out. I like and the then, French's ketchup because it's got less sugar. I've never heard. I've, Hunt's was my favorite. Yeah, they got the French's mustard, and they, once in a while they have yeah, French's ketchup. And I, when you like look at the labels, which I have to do now, uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot less sugar in the French's, but I can never find oh, it. Really? Yeah, I've never even heard of it. Yeah, Hunt's the Heinz is, is the Heinz is very sweet. Very a lot of sugar um, in Heinz. The only, I don't usually put ketchup on my fries. Oh, if I, I get a burger. It. Yeah, but anyway, you wanted to so you. So you're not the only Dave that has a birthday today. Yeah, yeah. So um, Dave Little, you know, he runs the sports simulation groups, friend of the channel. He's got his own channel that he does. Nearly 4,000 on Facebook, by the way. Yeah, good for Dave. Yeah, he's had that up for a while now. Now, Dave does a lot of Saturday afternoon wrestling on his channel. He used to do the Friday night basketball, and I don't think he's done that in a little while. Um, But anyway, um, so yeah, so Dave Little, his birthday's today, too. Not only is Dave Little's birthday today, which is my mm-hmm. birthday, so we're both days, we're both April 19th, he also, his wife is the same name as my wife. We So we married the same wife name, we have the same birthday, we have the same first name. That's pretty hilarious. It's amazing that you're both married to Zarley's, you know that? Yeah, and <laughs> Zha Zha's, and, and we, both, <laughs> we, we both have had heart ablations. It's like, well, it's like mirror. Oh, that's right. I forgot he yeah. had one, too. He's had a couple. I think I've had the one. I think he's might have had two or three, but I've had the one. Um, and so, yeah, so me and Dave Little have a lot in common. So Dave Dave sometimes listens to the show. You can tell when Dave listens to the show because it's all capital letters in comments because he's shouting at us, you know. So it's hard to say if he's a friend of the show or not because he's always yelling at us. He's you know very he's, defensive he of is, where he, he lives. He is. He is, you know. You know he's he's out there in, he's out there in Illinois and he's all upset when we when we get it wrong you know oh yeah Illinois there you go that's gonna draw some comments <laughs> I it, he was I forget who he was on with a few years ago and they asked him you know two truths and a lie or two lies and a truth or something like that and the truth was that I mean Dave Little is one of the most mild mannered people that you'll ever meet in all seriousness just sweet as sweet as a summer day is long. Mm-hmm. And he got thrown out of a wrestling arena for taunting a wrestler. How do you get thrown out of wrestling for taunting a wrestler? Isn't that what it's all about? I think it's part of the show. Be a, about, no, I think he probably was a bit inebriated. Oh, he went over the top. Yeah, and, you know, I, I can see him over, doing I mean, that. It wasn't like it was. It wasn't like it was a couple of years ago. I can but so just, well, see him doing that. I really can. Yep. You know. So, so happy birthday. So. One of the high schools I went to in small town Vermont, mm-hmm. we had the largest graduate. I think they graduated the largest class ever in that school's history, which was 64, somewhere in there. 
Again, not not big schools in Vermont. And so, ironically enough, and I won't give the year. If you know how old I am, you can pretty much guess. We had three I had three classmates born on the exact same day. Really? Out of 64 people. Three of the 64 were born on March 15th of that year. Hmm. You want to hear sure something it, funny? That, you, that, you know, in bigger schools, it's probably not a big deal, but, in it, but yeah. I had one kid in my class growing up that the same birthday as me. Um, you want to hear something real funny, and, and I just dug up this stat, but I had heard this stat before, and it made no sense to me. You know, the old saying is, how many people would you need in a room to guarantee that two of them had the same birthday, right? And mm-hmm. you would think, well, the answer would be 366, you know, to make sure that you covered leap year. So that, that way you're guaranteed, right. right? Here's the actual answer to that. Um, the real world group size necessary to have a greater than 50% chance of a shared birthday is 23. My dad and I had the same birthday. In a room of 23 people, there's a 50-50 chance at least two people yeah. have the same birthday. And in a room of 75, there's a 99.9% chance. I, 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 I kind of don't understand the math with that because the, the math guy in me says if you got 365, you know, if you get 73 people is what, a third of that, less than a third of that. How can, how can you get a 99% chance of 75 people? Is it the most common birthday, like sometime in September? Maybe, you know, maybe that's a good point. That's a good point. Maybe that's what it is, is that you know, there's certain times of the year that people have Obviously, more babies. People, people get bored, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Maybe that's what, yeah. Months of the year, and September is nine months after January. Yeah. So, so that, that would certainly You fit. might be right. Yeah, if you've got enough people in September, that might cover it. But, yeah, the, so the, those percentages are really weird. But you always say, you know, 99% ain't 100. You know, 99 we, in 100. Yeah, when we yeah, play man. our games here. So with the birthdays, I thought that was a weird stat that – 23 people gives you a 50-50 chance, and 75 gives you a, about a 99% chance of two people repeating or having the I, same I birthday. I never met anyone that was born in the same birth year that I was on my birthday. But my dad was, you know, my stepdad was born on my mm. birthday, or I was born on his birthday. And I have a neighbor down the hall where I live that was born on my yeah. birthday as well. And so, yeah, I could see it. The, the, you know, the, November, November baby. You know? The problem with, with April 19th is there's usually something bad that happens on my birthday. You know, you had Oklahoma bombing was April yeah. 19th. You had oh, the, was it? Yep. You had the bombing at the Boston Marathon. Uh, there was a couple of other April 19th things that happened that were bad. And my uncle reminded me this morning. He goes, uh, just to keep the tradition going, Taylor Swift dropped in a album today. It's like, man, April 19th is just a bad day. <laughs> she didn't drop a album this morning. She dropped a double album this morning. Oh, so it's a double, double trouble. So this covers this year and next year. All right. That covers this year and next year and the <laughs> triple album show right after Kelsey dubs her, right? Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah. So, so anyway, so that's our long intro. We've had so many guests on and things like that. We needed to kind of catch up with all this stuff here. And we got more guests coming up. Holy cow. I've been talking to people. You've been talking to people. It's going to be a fun spring and summer here on the show. Speaking of Taylor Swift. The story relates. I go to shut my, my alarm is on my phone, and I have. If you watch, if you watch me live, depending on where the camera is, you can see the uh, the the visual touch Madam Speaker the Amazon product I have next to me on the bed. Mm-hmm. So the other day, I go to shut off my alarm, and my elbow touches the screen, and she starts to talk to me. And the question that I get asked at six thirty in the morning is. Which Taylor Swift album is my favorite? Oh, man. Now, first of all, I'm a man in my 50s. I am not in Taylor's demographic. Mm-hmm. But that was the first thing I heard that morning outside of the little diddly little two and a half from my alarm. Like, what? <laughs> only I, because my elbow accidentally brushed yeah, up against I, the I, I don't. Not only do I know none of her albums, I don't know any of her songs. I mean, if you, if you said, hey, this is a Taylor Swift song, it's like, oh, I think I've heard that one. Like, I use a couple I like. In but, passing, but yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know much of that. I don't, it's, it's... All I know is that Justin Bieber got thrown out of the mall in our area when he came and played the fair a few years ago. Uh, that's too bad. The Biebs. And I've got several several unopened packs of new kids in the block cards. 
that I scored a few years ago. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So, okay. So I think we've, you know, that's what we're playing this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey, so in episode 222, we asked a question out in the wild there on Discord and on Facebook. Um, do you limit players on your tabletop or in your games? Do you have any limits at all on games played, innings pitched, home runs, goal scored, touchdowns, whatever it is, fouling out? You know, do you put any limits so do you carry over what happened in real life to your tabletop? And we got a lot of really good responses on that. So that's our topic. I got a few things to say on that. So does Ron. Uh, but first, let's let's do a real, real quick what we're playing, shall we? Mm-hmm. All righty. So real quick, I've been playing a whole bunch of things here. As you know, I've been really diving into the app of football. It's, it's just been, mm-hmm. That's just been, you know my game right now it's just getting me through some some pain <laughs> if you will Apparently so. it's just been very enjoyable to play uh i'm i finished week one of 1978 i did my nfl today 78 recap show on youtube it was kind of fun to do it was like a it was about a 10 minute video and i just kind of brent musburger over all the games and i put up the the really old 78 scoreboard that if you remember mm-hmm. seeing and I, I swipe left and up and down so I, I did a good job with the video part of part of it you know the reading of the stats was a little bit boring i guess but i mean people liked it so i might do that again so i fired up week two uh with the giants and the cowboys on my tabletop yesterday so week two started uh i pulled out my 76 season and uh thank you matt and i played the first two weeks of tampa bay the Buccaneers. I want to play the Buccaneers in 76 to see how they do. They gave Houston fits, but Houston pulled it out on a long Dan Pastorini pass. And then uh, they played San Diego, and San Diego fumbled the opening kickoff. <laughs> and the Bucks picked it up on the 15-yard line and scored. So the Bucks were up 7 nothing, and proceeded to lose like 34-7. to <laughs> But it was a good that whole, that whole season's gonna be one long episode of football follies. Yeah, well well that's why I'm kind of I'm not not going head first into that. It's like mm-hmm. I'll play I'll play some other things, then I'll pull out a game of that and play. Oh, yeah. Cause, cause it's it's hard to play. It's a, a long you know, when you're playing a long two hour play by play game with the Buccaneers from seventy six, it is difficult to play. Because they you know, again, I think there was like fifteen first downs to two at one point. They just they can't move the ball. <laughs> they they got defense, but they can't move the ball. Right. Uh so so I so I played some of that. Um I pulled out uh I played some Apple hockey, a little bit of Apple hockey. I put that back mm-hmm. on the table and streamed some of that. That was fun. And uh today I started off a, a, a birthday morning stream with Shootout Hockey 9091 season. So I did a video. That's the newest of, one, right? That's the newest one that, that came out uh, last month, I think. I finally got around to cutting it. I had to print it, so I cut them out. So I did a little video this morning of me cutting out the cards. And then I played a, a Boston-Chicago game. It was fun. Boston pulled it out. Empty net goal at the end. I think they won 5-3 or something like that. And I, and I used the, the um, fast action cards from drive Through. And, okay. and I got two of them. I got the the blue one, and I got the white one. The white one's the newer one I got a couple months ago. Uh, What's the difference? Uh, just just how they look, just the backs. Okay. You know, one of them's got the, the shootout logo on a white background, and the other one's got the shootout logo um, with a white background, but it's kind of like a blue trim around it. So it kind of looks okay. like a like a playing card. But the result, but the... Oh, yeah, the identical stuff. decks, just different backs, yeah. So I like to have the two decks. That way I can I don't have to shuffle as much, so I can kind of take one from one deck, one from another, two from one, three from the other, and then I'll shuffle at the end of the period, so it just makes it a little bit easier. But it was fun playing some old-school shootout instead of using the helper. It really was. Mm-hmm. It was it was fun playing some shootout hockey. So uh, I think that's all I really played. Um, oh, I did a couple of the, uh, the, the Chris White VSU games as well. I think I showed off the hockey and the basketball. I don't know if I talked yeah, about that. the basketball, you did a good job with Oh, my gosh, there. the basketball is fun. And how those games play is you, you roll a certain amount of dice, die, whatever, and then sometimes you uh, you add to that, subtract it out, or even divide that. And that's how you play that game. The basketball game is fun because you'll roll like 25 dice or 30 dice, and then you'll get your score compared to the defense, and that'll give you a, a, a total there. Um, but... Uh, it was fun. So what I, what I did is I took the 27 dice and I divided it into four quarters. Mm-hmm. And so I think I went like six, six, seven, and seven or whatever I did. 
And uh, so that way I could play it quarter by quarter instead of just rolling all these dice. That That was kind of fun. It gave a little bit of drama and a little bit of build up. And I think the team I was playing was 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 really bad. But I, uh, the last six dice that I rolled for them were like all fives and sixes. They ended up getting forty points in the fourth quarter to come back and win the game. So it's possible to check out early. Yeah, yeah. So that was fun. I enjoyed the basketball game a little bit more than I enjoyed the hockey game. But so I played some of Chris's games here on the channel. So that's pretty much what I've been playing. What have you been playing? Let's see, just a couple real quick, strange things. Pulled Strat Hockey back out mm-hmm. and played opening night game between in 89-90 okay. between the Detroit Red Wings. I posted the screening on, on the Facebook group. Um, the Detroit Red Wings and the defending Stanley Cup champion Calgary Flames. And Lanny McDonald is retired from the Flames or wasn't there for opening night. And the Red Wings weren't great yet. Wouldn't you know that Stevie Eiserman drops in five goals mm. and three assists. So it's one of those things that you're playing and you're going, oh, this game's over. Why do I keep playing? You know, because I don't tend to Zoom. I finish playing it out and I play both teams and all that. And by the end of the night, it's 10-2 Red Wings. So they're Calgary. celebrating the cup on opening night, it's, and they, they lose 10-2. And they lose 10-2 to, to Detroit. That's not the worst of it. So I looked at the standings because 89-90 was not last week. It's my freshman year of college. I looked at the standings. Calgary will end up, when all is said and done, with the best record in, in the Campbell Conference. They had 99 points that year. Now, there's no overtime point for a tie or a loss or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just strictly two, two, for, two for a win and one for a tie. You don't get anything for a loss. And Detroit wasn't horrible, but finished in dead last in the Norris division. And, they and won, so yeah. that, even makes, that even makes it even crazier than that. I, I don't have that season 88-89 in app. I, maybe I should maybe think about grabbing that and it's, playing that um, cup finals. It's one of one a whole Brett Hole's great years and apparently the Strat the Eiserman card is just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, I've played like three or four games with that set so far and the goalies are so 80s. Well, that would be 87-88 right for that cup. Is that be the right one? What? No, Calgary's Cup is 88-89, but I was playing opening night 89-90. Oh, okay, um, the, okay. It's the year that the Bruins made the finals okay. and had the uh, game one went to triple overtime or prolongation as my parents, there's a whole other story with that, but mm-hmm. but yeah, that we that, it's the last game I watched in the French, I'll tell you that. Um, so the other, really quick with the other things with Strat, so Gretzky opening night with the Kings opens up against the Leafs. So I do that one. Mm-hmm. Leafs win 2 nothing. Alan Bester, hmm. who maybe or may not be interviewed with our friend Randy at some point for being great Maple <laughs> Leaf goaltenders, <laughs> stood on his head. I think he stopped 42 shots. You know, I mean, the, the, the Kings are just... It's all offense. It is it is Edmonton South at that point. Yeah. Robotai and all that. So night number two of the season that I played, it's Edmonton and the Kings. Okay? It was the first doubleheader ever on hockey night in Canada. Opening weekend eighty nine. Mm-hmm. So October seventh, eighty nine. And so the Habs, you know, Patrick Wash shuts down Buffalo and then Edmonton beats the Kings for nothing. And to watch Bessier and Gretzky, they were lined up against each other. They're both second line centers and strat. Gretzky can't win a face off to save his life. Gretzky can't play defense to save his life. And in fact, after six periods, Dave, the Kings in that era of offense have as many goals as you and I combined. Oh, none. Wow. Yeah. And in fact, I think Ranford got the shutout on seventeen saves. That that's funny how you had a game that had ten goals and you got a you know a game that had nine. And then I've had two shutouts. Yeah. I've played four games and I've had almost three because Wall almost shut out Buffalo. Buffalo scored late. So that was the crazy thing I've been doing in hockey. In baseball, as my eighty eight replay winds on, I did um the Pirates and the Mets from Shea. Now, the Mets are going, should win that division that year in 88 by 18,000 miles. They were the best team in baseball. 
until they face the Dodgers in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh is hung around in second place, and so it's second at first. Must dream. Mets are up big. Mets are up seven to one going into the ninth. Dwight Gooden is shutting down the Pirates. It is, yep, we know what's coming. Gooden's pitch count is, this is an action PC baseball. Gooden's pitch count is good. I'm going to let him finish. If he can, gives up the first two, puts the first two runners on. Okay, we're not choking this one away. I manage the home team if you don't watch my stuff. And so I put in second pitcher, Terry Leach. He was a knuckle dragger, Dave. He pitched submarine sidearm. And so his knuckles nearly almost hit the mound every time he pitched. And so his pitches would raise up into Mm. the strike zone. You know, talk about keeping the ball down. It was great because it would just be ground ball, you know, ground ball pitcher. Cut the ball up a little bit. It's all of a sudden seven to three New York with the bases loaded. Okay, that's a save situation when the for those of you who aren't quite sure of that, if the tying run is on deck, even if it's a four run game, that's a save situation. So in comes the Mets closer from nineteen eighty eight, Randy Myers, who had blown one save all year. Until then. The Pirates scored seven. In the top of the ninth. Seven in the top of the ninth. Seven in the top of the ninth. It happens. And and they win eight to seven. Well, the, you know, one of those things about blowout games, you never know in baseball until you get the 27th out if you've won. And, again, you wouldn't want that all the time. But that was right. just beyond crazy. Yeah, it's never and, over. That's why, you, that's why I don't Zoom. I don't like to Zoom. You know, and yeah, we, that's why I don't like to Zoom either. Yeah. But, um. But that was like you've got to be kidding. Hmm. You have got it was it's like you know, it's too bad the pirates didn't take advantage of this and that. Like, yep, they did. They took just crazy stuff. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that's what I've been playing. Nice. All right, so let's get to our topic of the day, will you? Here we go. All right, so again, this kind of started on a little chat that I had on YouTube one night and I just kinda you know I had a play happen in my app, a football game, where Brian Sipe had to scramble, and then he fumbled. And when I went to the fumble chart, I'm starting to learn more about uh, this game, Jacket. Whereas, uh, d- you know, you know, doubles are usually good in app yes. f- for the for the for the offensive guy, if you will. You know, so um, so what what happened was I ended up um, I, I rolled on a scramble chart and I rolled a 66, and on that particular mm-hmm. fumble. Because he, when he scrambled, he fumbled. It said something like fifty-three. Then it was—I forget if it was D eleven or O eleven. So it, there was a fifty-three yard run, and then the fumble occurred. Okay. Now, according to the app of rules, uh, it happens at the fifty-three yard mark. Well, he's thirty-one yards from the end zone, so that technically it's means a touchdown. it's a touchdown yeah because he he, he dead. so he yeah he ran 31 yards plays over so the fumble never happened so so i i wrote in on the app or, um facebook group which by the way the app of uh, football facebook group those guys are great yeah uh, as far as helping you i mean you don't get the wise ass answers you don't get the stupid stuff it's just people answer your questions and and i don't mind joking around and having fun but you know, when you got to go through 17 wise-ass answers before you get to the someone answer, answering the question, it gets annoying, right. you know? And I get we're just trying to be funny in the whole bit, but it is nice when you get your question answered. So I said, tell me this, people. So this is my result. Are you telling me Brian Sype ran for 31 yards and he, and he got a touchdown because that's how I played it? And so uh, they said, yep, that's exactly how I played And then, then it come up. Someone brought up the fact that sometimes people will cap players at their longest game. And that just got me thinking about, you know, do you use player limits in your game? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We got a ton mm-hmm. of stuff to go over oh here goodness. from what from you guys ever. said. Yeah. Uh, so, so here's my thinking on that, Chuck. And so when I got thinking about that, um, my, my reaction was, this is my world on my desktop or on my computer, whatever I'm playing. It's 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 my world. I want to see what's going to happen in my world. And if Brian Sipe is going to scramble for a 31-yard touchdown run, that's that's what's going to happen in my world. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, do I want a lineman picking up the ball and running 99 yards for a touchdown? 
No, I, I kind of don't. But I would like to think that the game wouldn't card a lineman to scoop up a ball and run 99 yards. I, I'd like to think that that option would not be there in, in a game I'm playing. And if it is... And when, we t- when we talk to Jeff and Greg... You know, they talked about the results being baked in. So I think it would be very hard for a lineman in, in Napa football to do that. Yeah, so so in Napa, they, Greg said that he didn't use uh, any any caps on his players when he's playing solo because he says it all comes out in the wash during the season. So if you get a, a gain that's longer than you usually have, then you might have some shorter ones. At the end of the season, a, a good game should have it come up pretty close. Okay, again, mm-hmm. dice rolls happen. You know, it, it's fantasy right after that first roll. So... Um, so you just, you know, play, play it as you will. But anyway, so a lot of people say, yep, I cap it at my longest game. And, you know, again, your, your game, your way, it doesn't matter to me what you do. And it doesn't matter to you what I do. You know, we, 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 as long as we're having fun, uh, I like to let it go loose and free. I like to see what, what the results are. The results are, if I'm playing hockey and I get a, a third line defenseman from the Rangers that scores with a minute left to beat the Bruins, like really happened to me one time, <laughs> you know, he's got an, an 11 or a 12 scoring range and I rolled 11 or 12 on my two sided dice and he scored the mm-hmm. goal. What's he doing out there? I don't know, but it was his turn to be on the ice according to my line change chart and he scored the goal. And I thought that was mm-hmm. something that would probably, first of all, he wouldn't be out there. Second of all, he probably wouldn't score. But he was, and he did, and I went with it, and I thought it created a nice little storyline. Maybe he was caught out there. You know, again, anything can happen in sports, and that's why you can't. Right. I feel so. Any anything that happens on the table, whatever, should actually be able to happen because we've all seen sports bloopers with crazy things happening. So my thinking was, and I, you know, as I chatted with people during this talk, that if if you if let's just say because let's just stick with football for right now, let's just say. Um, you know, a, a guy's longest run from scrimmage was 50 yards. Let's just say whoever it was. Tony Dorsett, 50 yards. You know, O.J. Simpson, 50 yards was his longest run. Uh, so he, in your game, you want to cap him. He can never go longer than 50. Right. Okay. Well, what happens if his shortest run was two yards, just hypothetically speaking? And in your game, he gets zero or he gets a loss. Are you going to slide that up? to two because he never had one less than two or are you only going to punish him if he goes over 50 kind of makes you think right that if you're going to cap him at his best then you need to cap him at his worst so floor him floor him yeah so if you're going to do it one way do you do it the other way and I don't think many people quite thought about that. They just thought about, well, I don't want him g- going 99 yards for a touchdown. Well, that's great. What, you know, what if what if Tom Brady had, you know, I'm looking at his stats. He had some seasons where he hardly had any interceptions at all. So are you going to say to Tom Brady, if let's just say 15, for the sake of argument, he had 15 sacks. There was on, one season he threw two. Okay. With a, in a in a full in a full season, that wasn't yeah. the uh, okay. Okay, so quarter let, against Kansas City. That, that's right, that's right. great. I like that example. Okay, so you're playing whatever season that was, 2010, 2007, whatever it was. Tom Brady. Oh, 2010, threw, yeah. Okay, so 2010, Tom Brady throws two interceptions. So you're going to play 2010 New England Patriots. After the second interception, do you say that's it? No more. I would for Eli. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, so, so. No, uh, but I get, you, I get your point. You know, and I'm not being a wise guy here, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be a, a, a stick. I'm just trying to say, if you're going to cap somebody at their best, are you going to cap them from from going worse too? So, Tom Brady gets two interceptions. That's it. He can't, he can't throw any more that year in your game. Okay. So if so, you're also saying I think in, in 2007 he threw 50 touchdown passes. You, you're not allowing him to throw the 50 first. Yeah. Yeah, and so so again, that that's that's my kind of rationale behind limiting players or capping players or something. Because are you going to cap the top as well as the bottom? Are you, are you not going to give the, this guy the chance to hit a home run if he never did? You know, what if he never scored a goal? I mean, in hockey, you know, the guy at the point just throws it at the net. Anything can happen. I mean, you don't got to be Wayne Gretzky to score a goal in hockey. So many fluky plays in hockey happen. You know, and, and even in baseball, you get pitchers hitting hitting a, a single home run at a weird time, but it, it can happen. So um, so my thinking is, is I let it go w- within I, reason. I, I, I couldn't hit a triple the other night. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, mm-hmm. the smallest chance that something can happen, I, I like to see it happen. And I would like to think that the game would prevent something ridiculous 
from happening, that you would say this would never, ever happen, except in the case of, like, season ticket baseball. And I've told the story many times that, you know, Ron Say gets a rare play. And the rare play is the center fielder hits the wall, gets knocked out, the ball's sitting there. The, the batter gets a triple and has a chance for an inside the park home run. You got to, you know, you got to check, check the, um, the arm rating and the speed rating of the left fielder or something. And so I did, and he beat it, and Ron Say got an inside the park home run. Probably w- wouldn't happen in real life, but if the center fielder hit the wall, get knocked out, and the ball's sitting there underneath him. And, and you, you mean like the time that Billy Buckner hit an inside the park home run for the Red Sox at Fenway in 1990? Real life. Yeah. I mean, this center fielder, center fielder fell down or fell in the bullpen or something like that out there in, in the triangle. And Billy Buckner, who's got my speed, yeah, yeah. hit an inside the park home run in yeah. 1990. It was great. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you a convoluted answer, but I want to see in the comments if it pops up first. Because okay. I, I have a I have a couple different schools of yeah. a, a very political school of thought yeah. on that. Yeah. Now, so again, just kind of wrap up how I feel. I like mm-hmm. I like to play it wide open. Whatever the results are that the game gives me, that's who I'm going to go with. That's what I'm going to go with. Okay. When it comes to well, the only thing I really do as far as bringing real life into my games is is kind of what I'm doing right now. Uh, when I play hockey games, if I play a playoff game or if I play a certain game. If I can find out who played in the game and if I have all the cards, those are the guys I will put the cards on the table, lay my cards on the table, so to speak. Uh, mm-hmm. If for some reason someone's not carded or then I, and I might have to replace a guy or two, it, it, it'll happen. But I like to see who's in the game, who my starting goalies are, and that's who I put on the table. So I, I like to start with the guys who are in the game and then play it. And that's what I've been doing with the football, too. Let's see if I can get everybody that played, even the, the linemen and stuff, and get all the cards in there. If I don't have a card for somebody, if they're not carded, well, then I have no choice but to sub them in. And and even with the baseball games, you know, put it in the starting lineups. Let's see who the relieving pitches are. So those will be on the top of my stack for relief pitches. Did anybody pinch hit or pinch run in the game in real life? They go to the top of the pile for pinch hitting and pinch running. And then I start my game and, and I try to use everybody within reason as they were used in the game. But as far as that... I won't, you know, I'm not opposed to bringing somebody in unless I absolutely know they weren't in the game. If I know that, mm-hmm. you know, Brady was out, you know, week one with an injury or a suspension, then, then yeah, I'm not going to put Brady in because I know he didn't play. But if I'm unsure if somebody played or not and I got no way of really finding out without doing a deep dive, then they're eligible to play. So I don't, I, I start with a base of, of who played in the game and then from there, it's wide open for me. So that's where mm-hmm. I do start. All right, so let's get to some of the uh, the answers to that question. And I asked, uh, limiting players in your game to what they did in real life. Uh, thoughts on that? So in our Discord, uh, Alan writes in, I would not limit players to actual stats, such as no goals or home runs. I agree with you that we should let the dice, cards, and charts determine what happens. Why make anything impossible? That's from, okay. I do like that answer. Um and uh, Jeff says, uh, Jeff has a couple here. He says, I think if you're doing a replay and want to keep their numbers pretty close to real life, uh, if you're doing a new session in like OOTP, you can have players appear in more games if you want to do that. Um, David says, uh, if I feel it should be in the eye of the dice roller. We play these games for fun, or at least that's the basis of why we play. If you want to limit a player in a replay because he got hurt, completely understandable. Sometimes you want to find out what would have happened if that player didn't get hurt, and uh, that's something that um, I think Al was doing. Al Red Sox fan was doing with his um, Joe Namath replay with the 49ers. He does a lot of the Rams. Of what if, yeah, Rams. The, yeah. He he didn't let him get hurt, and so he played the season. So that that's a whole nother topic there. Um, but I guess that would be limiting people too. If if they're hurt and you, that's it. They can play six games and he's done. And Al decided to have him play. I mean, that's you know, do you play Conglignero through after August of sixty seven? Do you play Bobby Orr? Yeah, all of seventy five, seventy six. You know, yeah, Larry Bird a year only played six games. So so you know, yeah, like, from there that's kind of the extreme limiting there, right? The when you, uh, or right. unlimiting. So if you say, hey, you know, or, I'm going to play play Orr the entire year. Boy, oh boy, that's the opposite of limiting because he really didn't play much at all. Or, or no. 2008, Brady got hurt. You play Brady, you know. I don't think he'd be carded for, you know, one one series. But. Well, but you could use his 07 card or his 09 card. Yeah. 
so you know, the, do you play so, do you do you play right Jim Rice in the seventy five World Series? Yeah. So the whole I mean, injury there's, there's thing, plenty of options there that you can that you could do. Right? Yeah. Do you play Gronk in the the Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl against the Patriots? You know what I mean? I don't think he was in there. I think he was hurt in that game. So yeah. So so that's a whole lot of topic there too, as far as you know injuries. Do you how do you what do you do with injuries? Do you ignore the injuries and play the guy in there and see what if would have happened, or, or do you? Uh, you, that's one thing that I do. Again, I start my game with the guys who played in the game. So I guess that's that's my limit, is limiting mm-hmm. who played in the game, uh, if I can find out who played in the game and who didn't. But then after that, it's pretty wide open. Uh, Turbocharge says, um, for me, it's pretty simple. I don't limit anything. If it can happen in real life, I want it to be there at least as a possibility that can ha- happen on my tabletop or PC. And now, and he goes on to give uh, examples of, you know, did, did he get a home run? You know, did he get a touchdown? You know, he goes, I, I want that to happen, you know. And he did, he did point out, he goes, um, a lot of people commented on my John Mackey 99-yard touchdown pass in my Super Bowl replay with the Jets mm-hmm. and the Colts. Um, and, he, and he says, he, you know, he did like that that happened. And someone else pointed out that um, John Mackey had an 80-yard catch. So 99, 99 yards is... No, it's Jimmy, Jimmy Orr for 84. Oh, Jimmy Orr for 84. Okay. So um, one of those things was pretty close. Um, but um, we looked this, I looked this up after you had that. You know, do you remember how many times in NFL history there's been a 99 yard touchdown pass? Oh, we talked, it was like 10 or 12, right? 13. Thir- okay. Okay. And we haven't had one since 2011. Yeah. It, it, but it can happen. And it happened on my tabletop. Yeah. I mean, it's it, right. Now, th- now, there's the killer, though. Um, on that Earl Morrow card, an 11 and si- or 66 is a one. And a one, to the best of my knowledge in Apple football, on any pass anywhere on, on the, uh, the field, a one is a touchdown. But it, but when we looked it up, he had an eight point two touchdown percentage. So eight percent of his passes, complete or incomplete, went for scores. So that would so be correct, co- correctly so carded. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's funny when you look at it initially. You're like, oh my gosh, and you know, and we did that with the ranges, the seventy one, seventy two ranges. Look at their scoring ranges; they're so high. Well, when we looked but it up, they, but they scored a such a high percentage. Yep. of goals. Yep. So it, it's all correctly carded. So that 99-yard touchdown pass that we had, well, you know, that that's that'll at you know at the end of the replay that should balance out to what it should be. So, mm-hmm. uh, let's see, Seaver 311. I like limiting usage to real life as I'm an as-played replayer. Uh, however, if a runner or receiver had a longest run of say 40 yards for a season and the dice roll gives them 75-yard TD, I would not want to limit that. Uh, the other comment from Jeff was, I would never cap any player's statistics. Getting close to realism is ideal, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, he says, if Ricky Henderson steals 150 bases in 1982, I'm not going to be upset. You know, um, He very well could have done it. And if Dan Marino throws 55 TDs in 84, that works for me. So, that's not mm-hmm. one. Steeler fan, uh, I defer to Stratomatic's rule on this. You, you limit a player to his longest run unless his longest run was 30 yards or more for a touchdown, you know? And if the guy's run, longest run was 42, that's what he's limited to. So he likes to go. Uh, you can cap that in the game. Yeah, you can cap that in the football game on the PC, yep. So those are a couple of people on Discord that wrote in. Uh, All right, now, well, I'm going to go with the, with the sports sims and, and Yeah, no, what we can do if you want, we can kind of alternate between sports sims and digital to dice. All right. So if you want I'm to go not ahead. I'm sure how many of these are common between the two. Mike for the truck. Unless it's a what-if replay that's special to a player situation, I prefer to keep everything in line with whatever a player or team did that season. In many cases, someone's ratings and stats are based off this, and someone with two rushes and two passes all for touchdowns, and that was it all year, may end up being an unstoppable scoring machine. Or a player that never hit a home run hits three in a season or only played five games in real life. In a nutshell, the stats or ratings would be too screwed in one extreme. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Tebow, Jules Tebow, friend of the show. We've had him on many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to get the stats to come out right. For example, in a season replay with APA, the D pitchers, have to get their actual innings as hard yeah, they as it is. So, so yeah. So that that's the that's the thing with um when you're playing, uh well well I say you know well any game actually you know I I brought in uh, Joe Pasachik for the Giants was two for fourteen in the game I was playing. So you know what I did? 
I took him out and I brought in the backup guy. Guy I never heard of, but I brought in the backup. Even though he wasn't as good as Pasarczyk in my in my mind, in my game, you know, you're bringing in the backup quarterback at this point. The, the, the starter, okay, it's me rolling the dice and I get it, but it's not doing well. And the same with hockey. You know, the goalie's playing bad, you take him out. You know the guy that's coming in is worse, but the guy in there is not having a good day. So you bring in the backup goalie knowing he's worse, but that's what you would do. And the same with pitches. So, again, with APA, you know, you got Louis Tion on the mound, and he's an A or a B, and then you bring in, you know, Stanley in relief, and he's a D or whatever. That's what would happen in real life. You're bringing in right. someone, and you know he's not as good, but you, you have to put them in the game to make it work. Otherwise, Joe, you, you're Joe, gaming the game. Yeah. Joe Pisarczyk is to Giants quarterbacks what cheese was is to cheese. <laughs> You can quote me on that too, but yeah. who is their backup that year? Oh boy! Uh, if, if if I mean, I mean, Pesarchik wasn't all that great to begin with. Yeah, it was. Um, I'll tell you his name right now because I got I got I got the cards. Randy Dean. Randy Never heard Dean. Of him. Yep from from Northwestern. Randy Dean. So he but, he but, I brought him and he and of course I'm rolling doubles for Randy Dean. So that just added to the storyline that he came in for Pasarchik was throwing throwing darts left and right. You know, my, mind you, I turned seven that season, but I <laughs> I do remember the miracle at the Meadowlands. Yeah, I think we all do. The, uh, anyway. Steve says, I do not like hard and fast restrictions. What is the point of trying to be the manager? The game needs realistic injuries and the and rest rules, position players and pitchers. But that just mimics what a real-life manager faces. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Glenn says, uh, completely against it. There's always some kind of a chance, a fluke, a break, where any professional athlete could do something. And that's a really good point that we, we seem to forget. These are professional athletes. And, you know, and right. I, I know you got your, your Joe Montana's and your Randy Dean's, uh, but it, but they're all in, in the See, NFL. First the, and last time those two were ever mentioned in the same sentence together. <laughs> Ever, but, ever in the history of sports conversation. But, That's it. But you know, they're, they're all they're all in the NFL. They're all the. the no, it's true. No, absolutely. They're all playing at the top level because they should be there. And and again, any professional athlete could do something. You know, again, you know, if you're on a bad team, you know, you, you know, what if you're on a good team? But but anyway, yeah. So I like Glenn's point here. You know, and then he says, uh, you know, a puck bounces off a skate or a stick, defender falls down, misses a tackle, batter connects just right with the wind blowing out, etc. You know, yep. t- take uh, take a field goal kicker in a football game. A coach may send out a kicker to try what would be a career long attempt. Maybe he makes it, maybe not, but he still gets the chance. That's what's realistic. I mean, if you go back to. Um the, the Dempsey field goal or the uh, the Ravens kicker, you know, this has yep. never been done from 63. It's never been done from 66. Well, someone has to do it the first time. Yeah, so why not give him the chance? As small of a chance it is, give him the chance. Yep. All right, me? My yep. turn? Yep. Okay. Mr. Tower, you know him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes says, on our show the, like every 100 episodes, doesn't he? Is it, By request, right? <laughs> Skip Tower says... Put put this one in the one of the reasons why I love fictional teams. It's nice not to worry about arbitrary limits on player usage due to how they were used historically. And he brings up a good point. When you do pure fiction like that, it is you are the coach, you are the manager. You're you're not going against the historical grain, you're creating the story. And with the fictional part, you're creating the yeah. whole story. No, that that's a good point too. Fictional, you don't. No one can yell at you for pronunciations or, or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. Although it, it's kind of like dodging the question, though, Jack. It's kind of like calling in sick. It is. It's kind of like calling in sick when you say I play fictional because not. It, no, but he, did. he I, called know, in I sick. A, I think there's a point. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> No, You're it, wrong, but but it's your birthday. Oh, I'm never wrong. Come on, come on. No, that's no, a, no, it's in, a good point. In, in all, yeah. In all seriousness, though, you know, I think that it's safe. You know, Playing fictional, you, so safe. It really is. Well, I think that you know, I think it's everyone has a different mindset. I mean, what would you do in a draft league situation? I don't think any of these kind of go in there. And there's all sorts of rules about you know you don't you can see the limit for don't overuse the guy that had 50 at bats in your draft league or through 25 innings. But again, you know, it's your game, your rules. So no, I don't think the fictional fictional is just about pure storytelling. You're, you're writing the story. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. No, I but get it's it. your birthday. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> But but you know but you you were talking about something just a second ago about you know if if you wanted to you know play this guy or that guy you're kind of kind of gaming the system at that point because even in Apple if, hockey if you're, if you're doing that with a low usage guy you're absolutely gaming the system yeah because there's there's some guys in Apple hockey fourth line guys that have a super high scoring chance mm-hmm. you know like like a twenty five or twenty six which is huge scoring chance in Apple yeah that's mm-hmm. that's Wayne Gretzky numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, but but this person, you know, they they have a sky a high scoring chance because they didn't play much. But the the short time that they played, they produced. They they, they or they have no defense whatsoever, and you yeah. only want them out there. Yeah, but it, but it, it's not. Right, the, I mean, right. the, the guy might get seven or eight minutes a game. So if you want to play him thirty minutes a game and and have him get six goals a game, that's gaming right. the system because oh, he's, he's not supposed to be out there more than seven or eight minutes. So when he's out there, if he happens to get the pocket, if he happens to get a shot on net, chances are good that he's gonna put it on target because that's just kind of what his stats said. That's what that's how he should be carded, so to speak. But yeah, to go and say, yeah. Oh, this guy's got a great look at look at I'm gonna put all the highest scoring chance. Well, he's supposed to play eight minutes and I'm playing him twenty eight. It's gonna skew the game. I'm gaming the oh, game. Oh absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, let's see. Ron uh, Bernier says, while I'm a okay. huge proponent for as played replays, once the game starts, any players could be used based on the game conditions that occur. But the key to a good replay is using players realistically, and and I, I agree with that. If pitcher A was used a lot in long relief, and a team starters get shelled more than in real life, then that long reliever may get more innings or appearances. Or a closer may get more or less save opportunities in real life based on how the game plays out, and and that that's kind of I agree right there with with uh, with Ron Bernie yeah. on that one. Is start with the guys in the game, and then whatever happens in the game, you know if that if if the opening pitcher can't get out of the first inning, you know then he doesn't, and things are screwed up, you know. But at least start on the level playing field and right. see where your game yeah. goes. It might play out perfectly, you know, as the the, the actual game did, or it could go off the rails. Uh, that's, you know, that's what I always say, you know, once the rubber bands come off, it's all fiction. So, but yep. you know, you're the ones that determine who's in the rubber bands. Um, Mike says, I try to mirror the player's real life playing time or innings limits when I play. Now it's not a line I would, cr- wouldn't, would not cross no matter what, but I like to try and quote unquote co- coach them up or maximize their usefulness while adhering to their actual roles. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, Al Red Sox fan. A uh, friend of the show, he? yeah, um, <laughs> says, uh, not the way I play. I like to see what if that's what makes it fun for me. I can read the history of a sport, but for folks who like to see how close to actuality they can get, I would think it's more important and fun for them. So that that's true right there. If you're trying to nail the stats in your game, then that's when you're going to want to try to to limit people and cap people to, to what they did, how much they played. You know, and that way they, you'll get the uh, the more accurate stats. You know, mm-hmm. maybe you know. So that's so that's kind of what Al was saying. He also says, "Have a great day and beyond." And um, Dave is the best guy on the podcast, so that's what he's finished up with. It was have a great day and beyond and the smiley face. I know that's how it ended, but it's your birthday. I'm not going to argue. It's your with birthday. You. It's your birthday. Da, da, da. It's not my birthday too. All right, <laughs> Mark says. I think it's. A hundred percent depends on context. If it is your own replay, who cares? Do what you want. Just recognize the pros and cons of your decision. It's your time and enjoyment, and what someone else may like may not be what you like. If it's a league, then I think some sort of quote unquote usage, be it limiting to games played or something like at bats, carries, minutes, depending on the sport, makes sense. Leagues need rules not for quote unquote realism's sake, but to make sure all owners have an understanding of player value, including how much they can be used. That's pretty much spot on, actually. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, that was another good one. Uh Appa Eric says, I try to get every player their average passes, runs, targets per game, but allow things to vary based on the game situation I'm playing. What we're seeing that a lot is the game mm-hmm. situation. Uh, is, is really determines what happens. Uh, for instance, if Roger Craig averages 14 runs a game, but the contest I'm playing 
uh, with the 49ers, find, find themselves up 28-7 to seven in the third quarter. Roger Craig may end up with 20 carries instead of 14. Uh, that's one of the points I was going to make at the end of this was, yeah. was that one right there. As, as the 49ers go into ball control mode, and, and it evens out when they mean, may need to throw more, and Craig may only carry eight exactly. times. Exactly. So, so that's one of the points I was going to make. It all depends on context, especially with football. In mm-hmm. baseball, you get 27 outs and everyone gets three at-bats or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But in football, especially, depends on what's going on in the game. Just mm-hmm. like you said, if it's 42 nothing in the third quarter, nope, he can only touch the ball 20 times. No, we just want this game to end, man. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and so, yeah. So, But I think football is unique in that respect is that you can't just re- – yeah, you can change how you choose to run off the clock, which is not the case in in basketball. You know, basketball, you can put your bench in the last six to ten minutes. Baseball and hockey, you just got to keep playing. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree with a lot of that. SJ says, I like in real life plus 10% if enough players, enough other players otherwise. Best judgment or whatever is most fun for you. So he pretty much goes with usage plus 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul King says, I think it's too much of a challenge personally. For example, if you're playing a basketball game and say in real life they played 40 minutes, but in your cards and dice version, they pick up a fourth foul in the first minute of the third quarter. It's almost impossible to get, set up, yeah. to get them the 40 minutes. Yeah. That's, that's another point too. It's, you know, like I say, I don't play a lot of basketball, but yeah, I mean, if you get in some trouble there and you're, you're close to getting kicked out of the game, then you got to scale back the minutes. Yeah. It, it'll, over the course of the season, it'll average out, you mm-hmm. know. But yeah, you know, I'll get to that when I talk about okay um, that a little bit later. Jim says doing a replay it makes sense. If doing ninety eight, for example, JD Drew and Shane Spencer with five hundred plus at bats, I guess hanging him that year, would be fun to see, but have a major impact on results. Although when I was in high school and I picked nineteen eighty eight Louis Medina. We always called Funky Cold Medina, by the way. That's a mic <clears> holding <throat> on. For some pop in our <clears throat> friends league, he had for some pop in our friends league. He had a good homer card with limited at bats, but I only used him off the bench. Again, you know, he talks a little bit about gaming the system. If you know someone's got some good power, Kyle Schwarber for a more moderate hitter. But yeah, you know, so he talks a little bit about you know some what ifs and and that. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Tim Tucker says, I put some limits on football skill position long gains. If a guy had a real-life gain of 40 yards or more, he's unlimited, and he can go 99 yards if the game calls for it. If his long was under 40, though, I cap him at his real long game. I just don't want to see <laughs> things like a gimpy knee Joe Namath or a 48-year-old George Blaine to scramble for 90-plus yards. Just yeah, per- I see, th- see, that's the kind of thing. Again, it's all... Choose your own adventure, mm-hmm. but yeah. you would you would need to be wheeling out the oxygen truck if George Melander was running for yeah. seventy five yeah. yards. And he says it's just personal preference. As I realize this also limits some guys who are capable of longer runs. And I, I would like to think, though, uh, Tim and, and Ron, that no game sh- th- there should not be a possibility of Namath or Blanda scrambling. Or pick up a fumble for ninety yards, and 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 I know that you know Brian Sipe just ran for fifty three in my game, and and that could mm-hmm. come up for them uh, if, if that's how the fumble thing worked out. But I I would boy I really le- would like to think that the game would not allow that to happen. Something that crazy, it could it you know it again you don't know how the the planko chip's going to fall depending on what dice exactly. you roll or what chart you're looking at. But I would like to think that that these guys here would would not would not be eligible to get a run like that. Again, I, I, I don't know, but... It should be as rare as me going on tour with Taylor Swift. Yeah, I, I just don't think that it should happen. But if it does, you know, again, I'd like to think it wouldn't. Uh, but mm-hmm. it, but in the game, if it happens, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's. I'd have to think about something like that. If, if yep. You know, if Namath ran for 99 yards... You know, he picked up well, a fault. 60s Namath could do that. Yeah. 70s Namath, you wouldn't. Right. And again, your game, your rules. Mm. All right. So Walter says, I try to give players some extra playing time, but nothing ridiculous like batting George Puccini 200 times or Puccellini. Wasn't that in a Marx Brothers movie? Um, 200 times in a season. So I guess he's, you know, if, if you got 15 at bats, he's not getting 200. I think is what Walter's trying to say. Right, yeah. Um, 
Kevin Albertina says, I certainly try to use a player the way they were used in real life. I wouldn't have a guy that hit 400 batting only 20 times uh, start every game. I, I, I won't be exact, meaning that they might get slightly more or less used in real life. Just not a significant difference, you know. The only exception, he says, is with injuries. And so that, that's what he likes to use is um, something like that. Um, and he says, I've always wanted to replay a season to see if the Cardinals could have won the Eastern Conference with Johnson playing all 14 games and possibly okay. face the Packers for a chance to win the Super Bowl one. In other words, I'm generally okay with what-if scenarios. So, right. Yeah, so none of us not too crazy on it. Yep. Uh, some dude by the name of Gillies Stebolt. Mm-hmm. Ever heard of him? Getting in twice in one show, Tebow, not bad. He's a, um, he's a Hall of Famer. Well, he is a Hall of Famer. You're right. Uh, one interesting thing is that when I was a younger gamer in his 20s, one of the main enjoyments of APA was playing a part season guy with awesome projected stats and playing him 162 games to see how he would do. Think late 80s, early 90s, Rex Hudler and Kevin Moss. So, again, the what if thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Robert Latson writes in RJL. I think it's difficult to do that based on the game situation. I try to bring out players with the most at bats or innings pitched in the early part of the game if need if need to, but then I may use a ringer player if the situation arises. Mm-hmm. And he also says he's going to discontinue his inside pitch baseball and go strictly hockey on his channel sometime soon. Okay. Tom says I don't use any rigid restrictions. I do what feels right or what's more fun. I'll give an example. When I was little, my favorite first favorite player was Gates Brown of the Tigers. Wow. In 1968, he had a crazy year hitting like 360, mostly as a pinch hitter. So I'll play the 68 Tigers and use the DH to get Gates in there, even though the DH wasn't in use then. I know I just horrified the purists. Um, spelling salts are in aisle five. Nothing wrong with that. Again, you know, I mean, I think a lot of the things that we've talked about is what if. And, and that's one of the reasons why we play. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of back Tom up. Don't know if I would do that or not. But again, you you know, for the '60s baseball, what do you do with Conglignero after he go, gets beaten in the eye? Mm-hmm. You know, so Tom just with Gates Brown made sure he got in the lineup. So yeah, that's that's a what if. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Edwards has a long one here. He goes, I want my games to be somewhat realistic. I don't expect perfection, but the better players should be your better performers, and the lesser guys contribute here and there. And you're, that's why they're your lesser players. He goes, I have no problem with guys who did not score a goal in hockey not being able to score in my replay. Same with hitters in baseball. He goes, let the dice decide things. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I play games is to take myself back in time and visualize games from days where we enjoyed an individual team or season. The dice will take care of variability in the results, but I expect the variability to be reasonable. You know, because I want Yaz to be the big gun for the 67 Sox and Bill Russell to control the boards and Oren Esposito to be the big point getters in hockey. Um, he goes, if the stats are reasonable in the end, I'm happy because I watch it happen as I played the game. He goes, lastly, I try to use guys realistically and in games they did participate. If the guy that was two for five on the year with a home run pinch hit and he has a monster card hits a particular game and the game just takes a pinch hitter, then he becomes the guy. He goes, I'll live with the outcome. I'm not a fantasy player, even though some of the replays are fun to watch, the, you know, the what ifs. So he, he sounds like he's a little bit more strict with his stuff. He's okay with guys yep. not scoring goals and not getting home runs. He wants the bigger guys to perform and, and the other guys fill in from time to time. So it sounds like he's a little bit more strict with things, which again, per- perfectly fine. You know, yep. nothing, nothing wrong with it because that's what should happen, you know. Right. Um, but he, he's going to let the dice decide what happens in his game. Ronnie L. Gatito, no relation to me. Says, I think it would be fun to make a card for Superman and see what his numbers would be. Look over 162 games, but seriously, players should be limited to the number of games they appeared in. So he's a pretty strict with the usage limits. Well, I'm I'm kind of okay with that. That that's what I've been doing with my my football. Even my hockey is like I said. I look at the rosters, and if you know there was one game I played um, that the top receiver wasn't in. And I was like, I don't know if he was hurt, if he was out, or whatever it was. And even one of the mm-hmm. quarterbacks wasn't starting. Somebody asked me, they goes, why are you having this guy start, not this guy? And it's like, well, because this guy didn't play in the game. 
and come to find out that the quarterback was hurt for a couple of games, so he didn't play in a couple of games. So that's why. Oh, you're talking about Kenny Anderson? I forget who it was. There was a couple of games because someone asked, he goes, why is this guy playing quarterback? It's like, well, because. Because I remember that, that you were doing the Cincinnati and Kansas City, and I asked why Anderson was in there, and it was the backup because Anderson yeah. missed. No, I think, actually, you know something? I think it was the Buccaneers game. Someone asked me why I had um, uh, Gary Huff in and not Doug Williams. It's like, well, because oh. Gary Huff started the game. And so I put him in. And I ended up bringing Williams in later on in the game. I don't know. You, if, keep, you keep bringing up these eight-string quarterbacks, and they're going to want residuals, okay? Yeah, I know, right? So, yeah, so mm-hmm. I, get, I like to start the game with who played in the game, for better or for worse, you know. Uh, Dan Burke, I think it all depends on what kind of replay you want to play. I like to play as realistic as possible. Therefore, I will limit the part-time players to their time. Injuries might play into it. And they play a little bit more than in real life sometimes. But for the most part, they play about what they did in the real season. Others may want to change things and play players sooner or what-if scenarios. Like if Trout played the full season in his rookie year or if Chris Bryant was not held back the first few weeks of his rookie season. There's no right way or wrong way to each his own. Scott says, which is why I need as played if I'm playing a season replay. Or if he's playing a tournament, then he needs the season-ending rosters with the cards that reflect the full season. I, I, you know, I think the thing with as played is it makes those decisions a lot easier on mm-hmm. who to start. Yeah. You can determine who you want on your bench. But, you know, if you go, well, that's what Don Zimmer or, you know, uh, Terry Francona wanted, he used, okay, that makes my dis- that makes my life a lot easier. Then yeah. they can kind of go from there. I, I think D- Dan Burke, he just put it the best in his first sentence. I'm going to read it again. I think it all depends on what kind of replay you want to play. Yep, but. That, that, that says answer, it the best. It'd, it'd yeah, be kind of based on that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I like to depending again, again. Sometimes I like to look at who started the game because if I'm playing a season or if I'm playing a playoffs, and go with the guys in there. Other times, you know, when I do the one off, like I did an Apple one off, and and you know whatever one off, I'll put in guys that I want. You know, I want this guy in that. You know, and I'm looking in. Okay, so the the, the right winger who I know, you know, whoever it is. Okay, this guy I know. He's the fifth string right ring. He's going to play. You know, he's going to play on the third line cause, just because I wanted to. So on, on that particular replay, I'm putting in people that I know. And I'm just going to have fun with it. It's not any particular as played. It's not any. It's just a game, a one-off game, so I can put some cards in the table, see some guys that I like. And it in the big scheme of things, it ain't going anyway. It's just a, a one-time game. And I'll do yep. that. So I won't be matching up the guys as they played in real life. I'm just going to take, oh, here are my cards. Oh, this guy's kind of neat. Oh, I'm going to put this guy in net, even though he only played five games that season. And he would never be in net against Montreal. Because let's just see, let's just have some fun. Yeah, so, oh, so, so I do that sometimes. I look at the cards and just put in the guys. Sometimes I put in the best guys. Sometimes I put in guys I know. Sometimes I move things around. And that's for that particular replay, that's what I want. So, yeah. I've got five left. How many have you got? Four. Okay. So I'll combine two here into one. Then we should be even. Okay. All right. Wade says, I set limits of 107% of at-bats or innings pitched in real life. And then Dan says, do whatever makes you happy. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wade, you know, I think that's a pretty common mindset. You know, I think, it get, you know, 107, 110% gives you some variance, especially late in the year when you might be going for a playoff spot with, with a team that didn't necessarily make it in real life, but without going out there and trotting out the 50-inning guy for 100. Yeah. Or the 100, 100 at-bat guy for 350. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. You know, um, what, what Grant – Fines does with his football game for field goals is I think he gives them their longest plus three yards I think it was okay or five yards or whatever it was so so if you hit a a fifty five yarder then you could hit either fifty eight there's a chance for you to hit a fifty eight or sixty yarder in, in in his game I think that's kind of fair that it, 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 you're not capped but at the same time you're not going to come in and hit from sixty five you know yep but then again you know I. If you again, you can't go back and look at every single field goal kick because there's some guys that their long was 55, but boy, they hit it halfway up the uprights and it would have been good from 62. Right, yeah, but you're exactly right. You're not going to do that kind of research. It's a game for crying out. Yeah, it's yeah, you're right. It's a game. Um, 
but yeah, so but and um, so yeah, so capping it a little bit over, yeah, I, I could see that, you know. So so you're in the ballpark anyway. It's like okay, I'm not going to cap him, but I'm not going to let him, you know, get, get ridiculous stuff either. So so again, it, it's it's how you want to play that. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, mm-hmm. Craig Wessel, we haven't heard from Craig Wessel in a while. Craig, wow. ho- Craig, hope you're doing well and okay. Um, he says, once you start using dice, that goes out the window because random. Why yep. try to recreate exactly what they did before? You can't do it without putting your thumb on the scale, so to speak. Very good point. Uh, put the same player in exactly the same circumstances again, and odds are they'll do something different at some point. That's my mm-hmm. opinion anyway, which I'm sure isn't popular. No, Greg, I think it is popular. You're exactly right. No, it's, I think it's, that's it. I mean, it's one of the re- – It's random, you know? And yep. And – um. Yeah, I mean, you, again, you can pull a pitcher at the exact same time and put in a pinch hitter at the exact same time, and something different is going to happen in your game that happened in real life that's going to happen different in his game. It's going to happen different in your game. You know, it it really is. As Absolutely. your rolling dice are flipping cards, that, that's how it's going to be. It's all random, and um, yeah, so good point. J.A. says, I agree with S.J., and I think we've just sent some code. Uh, I try to limit to 10% over and under. That limits super cards. It's not all reasonable to handcuff a team. In game circumstances, in in game circumstances might dictate differently. Are you gonna pull a guy throwing a no hitter when he reaches his inning pitch total or total base fatter total for the season? Nah, I don't do that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Corey Robeson says, I'm attempting to do an action PC product where I add a couple of Negro League players to the forty six Red Sox to see if they can win the series. It's difficult because they played so many fewer games. Looking forward to a way to avoid them getting fatigued. Yeah, that, that's kind of a, a, a what if scenario there. Yep. And so, yeah. um, so yeah. So I mean, so if you bring in those guys that played less games, then yeah, I mean, you're going to have to come up with a homebrew way of fatiguing them or not fatiguing them because you know, just getting back to like the guy that played eight minutes of hockey, he's not conditioned to play twenty eight. He's, exactly. he's conditioned to play the eight, so you can't think he's going to have a high scoring percentage if if he's playing on the first line. He's just mm-hmm. he's just not going to. So yeah, so Corey's going to have to figure out a way to do that. Yep. Yep. Uh, Mike says I like to do no usage but set injuries on. So that's an interesting way, way to do it. Play when you want to play, but if you get hurt, it counts. Mm-hmm. Um, Stern shot says if nothing else, I think that that it is fair. To the others so that they get their full time, too. Having said that, of course, just a couple more games or at-bats is okay. So he's okay with that, I think. And last for me, Jim says, when I play, I limit super cards that only played a few games to just those games. I liked as played replays, but if I'm doing a fu- just a fun game or whatever, I play the starters usually, but we'll bring in super cards sometimes. I usually play the guys that played the most. Yeah, no, that, that's a good way to do it. Again, if you're just having a fun game, yeah, bring in the super cards. You know, why why not? You're, you're there to have some fun and give, give that mm-hmm. guy his due for that day. But, yeah, if you're trying to play a full season or a full series and, yeah, if you've got a guy to come in and pinch it for a home run and he's got a super card, yeah, you don't want him starting. That that's It's like to putting in the, the e-bug goalie card from Hockey Bones who, who can't give up a goal. You know, the e-bug goalie can't give up a goal. So once you put him in, that's it, door shut. If you're playing hockey bones, at the same time, you know, you don't want to start that guy because he never started. He just finished up. and So right. it's something that you really shouldn't play. I kind of wish they allowed for goals to be scored on an e-bug card, but, again, you got to go by stats. So if he's played five minutes, saw ten shots, made ten saves. He's carded correctly. Yep, he's got it correctly. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's up to you, up to you to whether, however you use that. My last one. Uh, from Jeffrey Mills, I am playing Diamond Mine Baseball on the PC at the moment, mm-hmm. and they actually have it built into the game where you can set playing time limits for bench players and impose playing time penalties for overusing players. Action PC does that too. I don't use it, but you can do that in all the, in all their sports. I, I do like the fact that that uh, some of those things are, are built in. So, I for my own personal thing. Um, when I do the action PC baseball replays, it's as played just because it's easy because I'm not doing just one team, parachuting from one team to another. What I try to do is I always give a player 
three at try to give every player at least three at bats, and then manage my pitching accordingly, um, and try not to screw over a team pitching wise for the next game. Such as if my best available reliever um, is tomorrow's starter, I'm not going to use him because in action PC it doesn't matter. As far as usage is concerned, again, my general rule of thumb is. Um, I try to use a reliever only once in a three-game series. A closer I'll go a couple times depending on how many games he pitched in real life. Starter can throw as long as he wants, as long as he's effective. So if he's done after three innings, he's done after three innings. But conceivably, anytime I use a starting pitcher, regardless of what era, and again, this is cards and dice for me, he could throw a complete game. Mm-hmm. He could theoretically throw 33 complete games for all I well, know. Well, you said the cards, the cards never get tired. Right. The, card, the cards never get tired. Um, interesting dilemma. Pete Maravich split his time between Utah and Boston and Larry Bird's rookie year. So he, play, he played on two I, teams? Played on two, well, not at the same time. Was traded to Boston. Oh, oh, not the same time. Oh, oh I not thought you. I thought you was on two. Did, can no. somebody do that? Can somebody play on two different teams at once? No. You know, they think that would be hilarious. It's like, you know, well, I got to go to Utah. I got a game in Utah tonight, and then tomorrow afternoon I'm playing for the Celtics. <laughs> I'm playing for both the Lakers and the Celtics because, you know, they still didn't have enough talent over the years. Yeah, the one, one of them should get to the finals. That's right. What happens if they play each other? Do you get – anyway. And so I didn't realize that that was the case with Maravich um, and that whatever version of Action PC and Above the Rim um, and Strat Basketball, he's you know, he's carded with the Celtics. And he has 40 games. He's not on Utah in action in um, Strat. So what do you do? It's Pete Maravich who can shoot. Do you limit him to his 40 games, or do you, or or do you not play him? I've done a combo of both. You know, I'll get him his 40. You know, I can choose his 40 games or, or whatever. Um, if I'm doing like a hardcore replay i'm not as concerned about usage um i'll pick and choose my starters i won't abuse my starting pitchers and strat on the pc will tell you how much you've used a player and if he's up over 140 percent, i probably will bench him just so i can get some other players in but then again if you do an as carded replay you only have 25 players for the season or 30 players for the season. So you got to mix and manage that way. Um, so I guess it's kind of realistic in the sense of, I know I've pitched him the last two days. I'm not going to go with him again. Or, oh, I've got him at 140%. He's going to sit for till mm-hmm. he gets down. That doesn't mean that he's going to be artificially capped. And I also, when I do those, I play to win. I'm not playing to generate stats. I'm playing as if I'm mm-hmm. the manager. Right. Again, so there's a fine line, and it can depend on what my mood is on a given day. Mm-hmm. No, we're winning this game. He's coming in. Or, oh, he's pitched four days in a row. I'm not going to do that. The other thing is, if I'm doing, you know, we talked about whether or not a player should, I mean, Dwight Gooden had that triple form the other day. If I'm doing, let's say, a strat, replay where everything is on the cards, I suppose if the other pitcher had a triple, I wouldn't mind that. But if I'm doing, let's say 1978, you know, Johnny, you know, Johnny Judy punch hitter, punch and Judy hitter, that's the one I'm looking for. And there's no homer on the card. Then I don't expect that player to should not be able to hit a home run. I'm doing 1978 version of the punch and Judy hitter. Punch and Judy hitter as a career, sure, he should have a chance. Or Punch and Judy in a what if or whatever is fine. But in a strict as played, we're doing, you know, simulating the 1978 season. If he didn't hit one, he didn't hit one. And I really don't want him to hit one. It's not going to ruin the replay for me if, mm-hmm. if I see that he did. So I guess that would be the political answer is I think it depends on what I'm doing. You mm-hmm. know, and the action PC stuff, I don't really care, you know, if mm-hmm. they do or not. It's part of the engine. But if the engine doesn't allow it, I'm not going to be bothered. Okay. But 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 usage-wise, again, you know, I'm playing – I don't tend to use the super cards, let's say, you know, someone who might have hit two homers and 20 at bat and struck out 18 times. You're taking your chances with that. But – 
you know, if, I, if I'm playing a team, I'm trying to win a game. Yeah. So well, I, well I like you said, you, there's different ways that you can limit players, you know, limit it by, you know, usage. You know, how much did they play? How many games did they play? How many minutes did they play? He can limit the results in the games that they play as far as hits, mm-hmm. home runs, goals, and touchdowns, and, and running, and the whole bit. So, yeah, there's different ways you can limit. I, I wouldn't cap a run. Or, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cap, you know, if someone's long for the year, their catch was 25. If they get one for a touchdown, they're mm. certainly capable of doing that. Yeah. I wouldn't cap about how many goals someone scored or how many points they scored in a basketball game. Because if you're using them but, correctly, but and you know. But the key, that's the overall key is correct usage. It doesn't mean 100%. It could be 125%. Yeah. I think you're going to get them within the yeah. ballpark. I mean, you know, because uh, if, if I'm playing that, that 68 Colts team and I'm throwing to the, the third tight end – who's a C receiver that got one catch all year, and I just throw to him the entire game. Eventually, if I roll a 66, you're not, uh, Earl Morrill's throwing him a touchdown. That, that would right. be gaming the game. That would be like, hey, look, I got him a touchdown. Well, you threw to him I, I 37. That's, I think that, that, that's a good way to put it. I try not to game the game. You don't want an unfair advantage. But I think as coach, manager, with a replayer, you know, I think if you're taking on a team project or whatever, it's your obligation to try to win the game. Mm-hmm. Just personally. Yeah. And, uh, and kind of like what, what, what uh, Jules Tebow said, he goes, you know, you do have to put in that D pitcher to make it come out right. If you want it to come out right, even though you hate it. And and I've learned that with the football game is that, you know, when I lay out my, my team in front of me, I go by, you know, who got the most carries and then the second and the third, who got the most catches and the second and the third. At, at some point, though, you do got to throw to the third wide receiver to get him his two catches or or his or, right. his, or his two attempts, and it, he might be the worst receiver on the team, and it might be a critical part of the game. But it's like if you keep going back to the two best guys over and over and over, you are kind of gaming the game. You do have to th- to throw to the bad guys and let the bad guys run the ball to make it right to to have it right, come absolutely. out right because otherwise. Just just put all your A plays and throw everybody else away, and then just just have an all star game. You know, if you put a if you put a thousand dollars into a slot machine, you, you might get a pull that gets you five hundred. But over that thousand dollars, if it's like one or two dollar pulls, you're only going to win back nine fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, that's it. It will all long way of saying it's all going to even out. Yep, yep. So anyway, so yeah, so. Boy, I tell you, we got a lot of responses on that one. A lot Thank of good ones. Much. Yeah, uh, I was kind of surprised. Different that, responses. We only had Tebow. Was I think the only one that repeated? Yep, yep. A lot of different responses. A lot, a lot of people in, in somewhat agreement. I would say that it's just you know I, I want to see what my game does. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to game the game. And, you know, and again, uh, you know, it sounds like a lot of people just play just play normal. They're playing mm-hmm. the game normally. They're not trying to cheat anything. And and when something crazy happens, it, it's more fun when it happens because you weren't expecting it. You weren't forcing mm-hmm. that to happen, you know. Right. So anyway, so yeah, so uh, thanks to everybody who got in their responses. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, this, boy, this was a long show here just because we had so many responses to go over. And those, those are fun. I like the shows where we have mm-hmm. a lot of uh, uh, feedback from, from the people. All right, so let's get to our three stars, shall we? So mm-hmm. episode 222 in no particular order. Star number three is Patrick Wheeling. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Patrick, for supporting the show. And uh, we've seen you on um, uh, on YouTube as well, coming into the chat. Thank you so much. Our number two star is, if I can say this correctly, Mr. Mao. Woohoo! So, Mr. Mao, thank you so much for supporting the show. Moo Mao Mao. Yeah. Mao Mao. And our number one star is Thomas Gerbasi. Yay! Thomas, thank you so much. Uh, for supporting the show. He was a star recently, too, so congratulations. You are kind of the star of the stars, I guess, Thomas. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's wrap things up here in episode 222, shall we? Mm-hmm. All right, so you've been listening to the Digital Today's podcast, episode 222, where we talked about do you use player limits? And we got all kinds of great responses. You heard what Ron yeah, and I think so about much. that. Yeah, and again... No right or wrong way. It's your game. It's not hurting anybody. You know, the only time you might have to come up to an agreement is if playing face to face or in a tournament, obviously. But on your, like I said, I'm playing Apple hockey and Apple football my way, Ron, and I'm having 
an absolute blast. However, I'm doing it, and it's probably different than a lot of people. But you know, something. Least, least you have to set limits, or else you would be. You know, mm-hmm. again, you, tr- you can try too hard to win. So, but yes, I think that was it was as you said a lot of general agreement with how people play. Yeah, but if you're playing on your table, play your way and have fun. And uh, that's the great thing I, I've discovered about the the Apple football community is that mm-hmm. no matter how I play, no one's ever telling me that I'm I'm doing it wrong and I'm and I'm bad person for this and just it's just if you're having fun have fun and just play it your way and uh have it your way as they like to say so anyway ways to get a hold of us digital to dice.com is the website nine seven eight seven five one dice is the text line digital to dice at yahoo.com is the email and over on facebook facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice and that'll wrap up episode 222 recorded on my my birthday <laughs> I won't argue with you. It's your birthday. It is my birthday. Th- I thanks so much for people that uh that commented on the birthday stream this morning. Hopefully, I'll be back on. By the time you listen to this, I'll have another stream up, I hope. That's what I like to do is just kind of play some of my favorite games and, and get them up on the channel and just kind of talk to people and have some fun like I, like I do. So, but anyway, um, yeah, you won't hear from me this weekend. Um, I'm actually going to see a Rush tribute band here in my town. Are you? Yeah, and, and every time they play, they're in the area. They're usually about half hour to 45 minutes away or longer for me when they play. And every time that they play, something would come up. And, and I don't do anything on Saturday nights because I work Saturday. But once in a while, like, my uncle will have a cookout or we'll have, mm-hmm. you know, a, 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 a gathering somewhere. Or, you, you got know. a Rush tribute band for your birthday? Wow. I did for my birthday, yeah. But th- this time they, they, they came. They, not only did they came, they came locally. They came right to my town. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, to a, to a point where, and there's nothing going on for me Saturday night. It's like, holy cow, there's no work for me. There's no nice. uh, play-by-play. You know, sometimes I'd have tickets for, like, a minor league game or something. And for the first time in many, many years, they're coming around, and I don't have anything going on. So I'm going to go check them out tomorrow Good for night. for you. Yeah, yeah, and I'm dying to see them. So anyway, that's my plans for the weekend. So you'll probably hear from me uh, maybe on Sunday on my channel or something. But anyway, okay. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And we'll talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.